Okay, so remember the three rules for simplified radicals are um, no perfect square uh, factors under the radical, um, no fractions under the radical, and no radicals in the denominator. So we're going to continue to work with these rules, and um, I wanted to introduce you to the idea of the division property of radicals, which says that um, if you have something like the square root of 100 divided by 25, okay, you could what you would do normally with that problem is you would simplify the 100 over 25, getting you the square root of 4, which we know to be 2. All right, and what I want to show you is, is that you can take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator and simplify them both separately and divide that way, and you end up getting the same answer. Okay, and so that's the principle we're going to use to simplify a lot of the um, fractions under the radical and to do something called rationalize the denominator. So let's get started. Okay, the first one, this problem, 64 over, square root of 64 over 49. Okay, the idea is, is that those are both perfect squares. So if you just separated them out just like we just did, okay, and then you can rationalize the numerator, rationalize the denominator, and just make sure it's a reduced fraction and you're done. Okay, on example letter B over here, okay, the first thing I would do um, is I would try to simplify the fraction as much as possible. So I realize that I can divide 8 by 50 and reduce the fraction and it becomes 4 25ths, okay? And I realize that I can simplify x to the third over x and it becomes x to the second. I'll just kind of remind you of why that is. x to the third on the top divided by x on the bottom, they cancel out and you're left with x to the second. Or if you remember that rule from monomials where you can subtract the exponents, it becomes x to the 3 minus 1 or x to the second. So that's why you get x to the second there. So then what you want to do from there is, again, you can either do this in your mind's eye or you could do it actually on paper. You give the, um, the top, the numerator, its own square root sign and the denominator, its own square root sign, and you just simplify from there. The square root of 4x to the second is 2x and the square root of 25 is 5, and you just check to make sure that's a simplified fraction, which it is. So we'll move on. Okay, um, sometimes um, the radical in the denominator is not a perfect square, and so you may need to do something called rationalize the denominator. And so you can see here, um, from example letter A, um, that's that we, we can't leave the square root of 7 in the denominator, and we can't just take the square root of 7. So here's what you want to do. You want to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same radical expression, okay? And you want to make, you want to choose carefully the radical expression that's going to make the denominator a perfect square. And so, of course, if you multiply the denominator by itself, do you see how that results in the square root of 49? Okay, and then, of course, whatever you multiply the denominator by, you want to multiply the numerator by so that this expression equals 1. Okay, because if we multiply an expression by an equivalent of 1, we're not really actually affecting the value of the original expression. All right, so then what you get on the top is the square root of 21 over the square root of 49. Okay, and we know what the square root of 49 is, 7. And so you end up with the square root of 21 over 7. Okay, now you want to make sure that's simplified. And so you want to remember that first rule that you're not allowed to have any perfect square factors under the radical. And so you just want to make sure you're checking to make sure that that's good. Okay, let's check out this next one. All right, the square root of 7 over the square root of 8n. So I can't... Um, take the square root of that denominator. I could simplify it, but it's actually just going to be easier if I just rationalize it by multiplying the denominator by itself. Okay, so you want to go like that. I definitely suggest you show that work. Okay, and then on the bottom, what I get is the square root of 64n to the second, which then simplifies to 8n. Okay, and then on the top, a square root of 7 times the square root of 8n makes the square root of 56n Okay, and you want to make sure this one is simplified. And so I know because I multiplied it by an 8 and an 8 has a 4 in it, I know that this um, square root of 56 also contains a 4. So I'm going to break it apart and make it 4 times whatever multiplies to 56. So you've got to like try to figure that out, right? And then you can take the square root of that 4 right there, which gets us a 2 on the outside times the square root of 14n 
over 8n. Okay, and before you want to call this finished, you want to make sure this is in simplified form. All right, and because this is a fraction, 2 eighths, you want to make sure you reduce that. So I'm going to reduce it to 1 fourth, so I get the square root of 14n on the top over 4n on the bottom. Okay, if you wanted to put like a 1 right there, you could, and now you can kind of see where that fraction 2 eighths became that fraction 1 fourth. Let's do a little bit more practice with ones like this um, before I have you try some on your own. Okay, so let's take a look at these three problems. They're each um, a little bit different in their own way. Okay, um, so one of the first things I look at when I see this one is I see negative 5 times the square root of 3 twelfths. Okay, and I would say before you start thinking about rationalizing the denominator, you want to kind of take a look. Can you simplify or reduce the fraction that's in there, and is it in your best interest to do that? And I think it definitely is in this case. So I would change this, and I would make it negative 5 times the square root of 1 fourth. Okay, and from there, you could probably see that 1 fourth is a perfect square. And so it just becomes negative 5 times 1 half, because the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And then you just multiply these two things together, and you get negative 5 halves, and that's your answer. Okay, on the next one, all right, here you have um, two different square roots, okay? And you might start thinking about, like, okay, well, right away I'm just going to multiply the denominator by itself. But hold on one second. That's actually going to be a lot of work. And so I think what you could do in this case is think about kind of putting those back together. Okay, the, the property that says you can give each numerator and denominator its own square root sign also works in reverse that says you could take um, a division of radicals and put them together um, in this way. All right, and so look what that gives us. It gives us the advantage of being able to say, well, I know what 120 divided by 6 is. Okay, it's 20. Okay, and then that took the denominator or the fraction piece right out of it, and then all you have to do is simplify from there and say, I know that this is 4 times 5, so it's 2 square root of 5, and that's my answer, and that's probably going to be the fastest way to go in that case. All right, so let's take a look at E. All right, um, E, I'm looking at this fraction here, and I see that it can be simplified because I've got some x's in the numerator and some x's in the denominator. But hold on a second. I think to myself, and I wouldn't write this down if I were you, um, I just want you to kind of like take a look ahead. Okay, if I simplify by canceling out the x's, it's going to leave me with the square root of 5 over 49x. Okay, and that's going to leave me with this x in the denominator that I'm going to have to rationalize. Okay, whereas right now, that denominator that's sitting right there is a perfect square. Okay, so I would probably leave this one not simplified, and I would just say to myself, okay, the square root of 5x, there's no perfect square factors under there, so I could just leave it like that. And then the square root of 49x squared is a perfect square. And so what I get is the square root of 5x over 7x, and I'm done. Okay, so just to clarify why I'm done and this is simplified, is that there is an x in the denominator, but the x in the numerator is really not x, it's the square root of x. So you really cannot simplify those things. Um, and so I'm done with that problem. Okay, let's try one last really kind of challenging problem, and then I'll let you try some on your own. So I'm looking at this, and the first thing I say is, like, you know, that's a whole big mess under the square root sign, the radicand. So I'm going to simplify it as much as I can. So you just think about the numbers. Um, you want to um, simplify 9 twelfths, and so you would make it 3 fourths, okay? And then um, kind of a little bit separately, I think about the x's, and if I simplify those, I get x to the third on the top, if you remember your monomial rules. All right, and then um, if you look at the y's, like right there, you get a y to the fifth on the bottom. Okay, so once I've got that um, radicand simplified as much as possible, then what I want to do is, and you could either do this in your mind's eye or you could actually do it on your paper, is you want to break it apart like this. Um, and on the bottom, since I know I'm going to be trying to um, take the square root of things, um, I'm kind of looking at this this way. Um, and so I realize that the square root of 4 becomes 2. So do you see how that works out that way? All right, so when I go to rationalize the denominator now, all right, and I could simplify the y to the fifth, but I, I don't think I'm going to. I can talk about y tomorrow. So you want to multiply the denominator and the numerator by the piece in the denominator that needs to be rationalized so that it becomes a perfect square. So then what happens on top is you get the square root of 3x cubed y to the fifth over, okay, and then it becomes 2 times the square root of y to the tenth. Okay, and the square root of y to the tenth is y to the fifth. 
So you get a, a two y to the fifth on the bottom, which is a nice rationalized denominator. Okay, now we just have to work on this top piece. So if you're looking at the top here, okay, I'm going to break it apart into its perfect square factors. So 3 doesn't have one, but x cubed gets to be broken up x squared times x, and y to the fifth would be y to the fourth times y. Okay, so looking here, I know I can take the square root of that and the square root of that, and so that becomes x y to the second times the square root of 3xy over 2y to the fifth. Okay, and as one last step here, you've got to simplify the things that are outside the square root sign. You need to make sure they're in simplest form. So this becomes x, and then the y's cancel out on the top, square root of 3xy over 2y to the third, and that's your answer. Okay, I'm going to leave you with um, a couple of six problems to try on your own. Okay, try your very best, and we'll check them in class when I see you next. Thanks.